Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about a new discovery about black holes coming from various dwarf galaxies. Mostly because in the past we've always believed that not all dwarf galaxies have black holes, specifically supermassive black holes. But new study seems to disprove that. Let's talk a little bit more about this and welcome to What The Math. Now there are quite a lot of various dwarf galaxies out there. Our own uh, Milky Way galaxy has a few of them orbiting around us. This is the most famous one, this is the Large Magellanic Cloud, where we also don't really think there's any supermassive black hole, like the one in the middle of our own galaxy. In the last few decades, having investigated various types of galaxies out there, most scientists realized that the supermassive black holes that our own galaxy has seem to be more prevalent in larger galaxies and seem to be for the most part absent from various smaller galaxies like Large Magellanic Cloud and Small Magellanic Cloud. And pretty much most of the recent studies, including this one right here, discovered no actual large black hole in these smaller galaxies. In other words, it seems that for the most part, the the presence of supermassive black holes is really limited to larger, more massive galaxies that are more well developed. But if these smaller galaxies don't have any black holes in them, and if larger galaxies are made from these smaller galaxies, how do galaxies get black holes to begin with? And so these are some of the mysteries that some of the scientists are trying to investigate. And this wonderful lady right here, Amy Raines, decided to take it a few steps further. Back in 2011, Amy was looking at this one specific galaxy where we kind of never found anything. This beautiful starburst galaxy known as Han 2-10. And this galaxy, even though it was quite powerful and had a lot of new stars being created in it, did not seem to possess any supermassive black holes in the middle, until Amy looked at very specific frequencies in using radio telescope and discovered that somewhere right there in the center there was actually a really large and really massive black hole. As a matter of fact, the mass of that black hole was not really much smaller than the one in the middle of our own galaxy, even though Han 2-10 is a much much smaller and much less massive galaxy. In other words, she realized that we just have to look for these black holes differently. So instead of looking at various galaxies in visual light, we have to start looking at them in radio light, using radio telescopes. And so this is what she decided to do with approximately 111 galaxies, more specifically smaller dwarf galaxies, where we didn't actually find anything before. And so in a recently published paper that you can find in the description below, she investigated several galaxies and discovered black holes that we've never seen before, and also discovered something really unusual about them. In short, out of 111 galaxies that she looked at, she discovered black holes in 13 of them, and they were all quite easily visible in radio frequencies. But the reason we missed them the first time is because they were not in the center at all. And if you look closely, you'll see that it's either a little bit off or completely off, and she refers to these types of black holes as the wandering black holes. Which essentially correlates with a lot of other predictions from other uh, scientists that suggested that for these smaller galaxies it's very likely that when two or more smaller galaxies collide, their central black holes very likely get dislodged from the center and essentially end up either completely getting kicked out of the system or in some cases end up essentially becoming wandering black holes moving around the outskirts of the galaxy itself. And from this discovery alone, we can kind of assume that a lot of other very similar galaxies probably don't have their black holes in the center either. Now, obviously, some of them may have lost these black holes and maybe they're actually somewhere really far away, traveling across the vast empty space of the cosmic web, mostly between various galaxies and potentially once in a while coming in contact with those galaxies. But in general, it does seem that a lot of these black holes simply become dislodged. In other words, let's just say we wanted to find where the black hole of Large Magellanic Cloud was located. Well, we've only looked at the center. We haven't really looked as thoroughly in the outskirts and we definitely have not used the radio telescopes to look at those outskirts as well. So it's very possible that similar studies will discover where the central black hole, or I guess it's actually not even the right word anymore, where the supermassive black hole of this galaxy is located. And this also applies to other similar galaxies, specifically Triangulum Galaxy. This galaxy here, if you didn't know, is actually one of our closest and largest neighbors. Almost everyone knows about the Andromeda Galaxy, but very, very few people know about Triangulum, which is also quite easily visible in the night skies and is also not so far away from us. 
But this galaxy, unlike other similar galaxies, does not seem to possess a central black hole either. So it's possible that this galaxy also has a black hole somewhere on the outskirts, the so-called wandering black hole. Also a few months ago, we've talked about this unusual discovery in the Milky Way galaxy, where one of these scientists discovered that something passed through the Milky Way and disrupted it in a major way. And we don't really see what it is or where it went. Some scientists thought it was dark matter, but some scientists thought that it was actually one of these wandering black holes. Which essentially means that there could be billions and billions of these really massive, really powerful and extremely dangerous black holes traveling across the intergalactic space. All of these are a result of various galactic collisions, and some of them might also interact with typical galaxies like the Milky Way once in a while. We obviously have no evidence of this yet, and we don't really know what happens when these black holes interact with galaxies, but because we've seen at least one sign in the Milky Way, and because we know these wandering black holes seem to be everywhere, it's definitely something interesting to consider. And so all of this, of course, means that there's still so much to learn about these massive giants traveling across the universe. But I think another major surprise in this study is the total mass of these black holes. None of them were really that small. As a matter of fact, many of them were very, very close to the mass of the black hole in the middle of our own galaxy, suggesting that even in these smaller, much younger galaxies, somehow the black holes managed to grow really big, really, really fast. And right now, other than trying to use computer simulations, we can't really explain this very easily. Because even though we can kind of explain why these black holes are dislodged, usually because of the collisions, explaining why they're so massive is a completely different story. We don't really know how they got so much mass so quickly. But other than that, that's really all we learned from this study. I think the most interesting thing here is, of course, the idea of these wandering black holes. These really massive objects just kind of flying through space minding their own business, until of course they decide to collide with a galaxy, or maybe two. Let's actually see what happens if we try to collide a very massive black hole similar to Sagittarius A star with these two dwarf galaxies I created. Now, once we discover more about this, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. But until then, that's kind of all we know. It's a very interesting study, but not really a study that resolves questions. It's a study that creates more questions. We now know that a lot of galaxies that we thought didn't have black holes have them. So of course, once we learn more, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, that's really it. Thank you so much for watching. Come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Maybe support this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. And maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences. Let's see what happened to these galaxies after the black hole passed through them and find out how all of this changes with time. Anyway, on that note, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye-bye.